Okay, so let's talk about free body diagrams and how to write summation equations. Um, so a free body diagram, you basically, <clears throat> you draw your object. Now, don't try to be elaborate. Don't try to draw an octopus. Just draw a box. I typically draw a box, not a dot, to represent the object. You want to draw vector arrows representing each force. The arrows should originate on the object and point outward to show the effect the force has on the object. So always draw the arrows out of the box. Don't draw them in towards the box, okay? Label all the forces. So they're all going to be Fs. So which type of F is it? Is it an FA, an FT, an FG, an FN, an FF? Like what kind of force is it, okay? You have to label them. And you have to write net force equations. These are summation equations for a net force acting in the x direction, and you have to write a different one for things going in the y direction. Th so things that are going um, in the x direction, so things that are going this way, and for the y one, it's for things that are going this way. Okay? So you basically add up the forces in any direction, and they're either equal to zero or they're equal to ma. So if they're balanced, they're equal to zero. If they're in unbalanced, they're equal to mass times acceleration, Newton's second law, because if it's unbalanced, it has to be accelerating. That's all. Okay, so let's do a little practice. So, you have an object lies motionless. So, that could be you right now sitting in your chair. So, you are exerting a force downward called your gravitational force, and your chair or your bed or whatever you're lying on um, is exerting a normal force upwards. There is nothing happening in the x direction because it says that the object lies motionless. So, um, so your F net in the x is equal to zero because nothing is happening. Your F net in the y is equal to Fn plus Fg and because it's lying motionless, it's in static equilibrium, so we set that equal to zero. Okay, that's it. Now you have an object slides uh, constant speed without friction. I don't really like drawing it, drawing uh, like stuff on the actual diagram if it has other stuff in the diagram. So I'm going to redraw just the box. Okay, and it's moving at constant speed without friction. So I know that it's an object that has mass. If it has mass, it has weight. So I got FG going down. It's on a surface, okay? Or so it says, I mean, it looks like a surface to me, so it has a normal force. If it's moving at constant speed, is there anything pushing it? Is there anything slowing it down from the other direction? So if nothing is touching it, so it's like a hockey puck on ice, like it got hit and then it just goes until it runs into something. And if it says it's without friction, there's no opposing force to keep it from just going that way, okay? So it's moving at constant speed. There's nothing happening in the x direction. So your F net in the x is again zero, and your F net in the y is the normal plus the gravitational, and those are balanced. So it's equal to zero again. Okay, so these are identical. You see them? One can be motionless and one can be moving at constant speed. So this was in static equilibrium. This one was in dynamic equilibrium. Okay, they're both in equilibrium because they're balanced forces, they equal zero. This one is not moving, so it's static. This one is moving a constant velocity, so it's dynamic, okay? Okay, fun times, more. Okay, here we go. So we have an object is pulled by a force at an angle to the surface with a constant velocity. Okay, well, so I'm gonna redraw this. I don't like to draw pictures where there's already pictures. So I'm gonna redraw this off kinda to the side here. So this is an object that has mass, therefore it has weight. So it has gravitational. It's on a surface, so it definitely has normal. <clears throat> now, this is moving a constant velocity, and I have this force at an angle. So how would you describe that force with directions? 
So I would say that this force is moving up and to the right. So when you divide them into their x and y components, you would divide this force into an arrow up and an arrow to the right. Now, it's being pulled, so this is a tension force. You can call tension forces FT or just T, it doesn't matter. So this would be um, T in the Y direction, and this would be T in the X direction. Now it says it's moving at constant velocity. So if it's moving at constant velocity, if I have a force exerted this way, I have to have another force exerted the other way that balances it. What force would be exerted the other way that's balancing this to keep it from going faster and faster? That would be friction. Okay? So, we write our F nets for this, right? So your F and the X, your F net and the X, you have friction and tension on the X. And it's moving constant velocity, so it's in dynamic equilibrium. So your F net in the X is equal to zero. In the Y, you have normal, you have the tension force in the Y, and you have gravity. It's not moving up and down. It's just moving along a surface. So if it's not moving up and down at all, we would say that that's equal to zero. Okay. Next one, an object is suspended from the ceiling. Okay, so here's my object. It has mass, therefore it has gravity. What's keeping it from moving is that rope. So if I have a rope or a cable, I have a tension force. And there's nothing happening in the X. It's not swinging, it's not moving, it's just sitting there. So I don't have any forces in the X direction. So my F net in the X is zero, and my F net in the Y is my tension plus gravitational. And if it's sitting there and not moving, it's zero because it's in static equilibrium. Okay? Next one. Okay. <clears throat> so now we have another object. It's suspended from the ceiling, but look, it's at, it has two cables, so you're going to have two tension forces, or will you? So let's draw our little box. So it has mass, therefore it has gravity, and it has two tension forces. One looks like it's going up and to the right, so I'm going to draw one up and to the right, and the other one looks like it's going up and to the left. So I'm going to draw two arrows, one for up and one to the left. I'm going to call this one T1 and I'll call this one T2. So this is T1X and this is T1Y. The other one would be T2Y and T2X. Okay, so it looks complicated, but it's really not because it's in static equilibrium. It's suspended, it's not moving. So your F net in the X is just equal to the sum of everything in the X. So T1X plus T2X, and it's in static equilibrium, so it's not moving, so that equals zero. Your F net's in the Y, you have T1Y, T2Y, and gravity. And it's not moving up and down, not moving side to side, so that's also equal to zero. Okay, last one. <clears throat> so you have an object slides pushed rightward across the surface with friction. So if it's with friction, then it's going to slow down. So if it's going to slow down, this is non-equilibrium, okay? Which means it's going to accelerate. So here's my object. It has mass, therefore it has weight, so it has Fg. It's on a surface, therefore it has normal. It slides pushed rightward across surface with friction. <clears throat> this looks like, with the lines being equidistant apart, it looks like it looks like it's going a constant velocity to me. So 
So if it's going at constant velocity, it is <coughs> in dynamic equilibrium. Sorry about that. I didn't look at the lines carefully when I wrote that. Um, okay, so if it's pushed, then it's going to have a force applied in the direction that it's moving. And to keep it going at constant velocity, it has to have friction. Friction opposes motion, so it's always going to go in the opposite direction of the motion. Okay, so my F net in the X is my friction plus my force applied. And if it's going constant velocity, that means that's zero. Now, my F net in the Y is my normal plus my gravitational. And it's not moving up and down, so I'm going to say that that's zero. Okay. Okay, so that's free body diagrams. That's a lot of stuff at equilibrium. We'll talk about things that are non-equilibrium another day. <coughs> now let's talk about Newton's laws real quick with a little multiple choice practice. So, a mixed martial artist kicks the opponent in the nose with a force of 200 Newtons. Identify the action-reaction pairs in the center change. So, I can't draw a foot or a nose, okay? But... I know that <clears throat> I have my martial arts person kicking somebody in the nose. So I know that they're in contact and there's going to be a 200 Newton force exerted that way, which means the nose is going to exert the exact same but opposite force in the other way. Uh, if it doesn't, then it's going to violate Newton's third law. <clears throat> so I would say it's D. The foot applies 200 Newton's force to the nose. The nose applies an equal force to the foot. So it's got to be D. Otherwise, it violates Newton's third law. Okay? Um, okay. In order for a rocket ship in deep space, far from any other objects, to move in a straight line with constant speed, it must exert a net force that is... Well, here's the thing, guys. It's moving at constant speed. If it's moving at constant speed, what is the net force? Zero. So it has to have a net force that is zero. If it's, if it's moving at constant speed, it's in dynamic equilibrium. So even if it had forces in the x direction, um, it would, there, wouldn't, there wouldn't be any acceleration, so the net force must be zero. Okay, and it does say net. Not forward, not backward, not friction, net. Net is zero. All right, number three. If a book on the dashboard of your car suddenly flies towards you, the forward velocity of the car must have... Well, let's see. So here's your book, and it flies this way. Well, books don't just move on their own because they have inertia. They have a resistance to, chain, to change their motion. So if the book is sitting on the dashboard of your car, it's still, and it suddenly moves this way, then the car that it's sitting on must have moved that way. Because this isn't, is going to resist a change in motion. So it's like it actually doesn't move. It stays still, but the car moves underneath it. And it just happens to go into your lap because... Um, <clears throat> you're a moron and left it on the dashboard when your mama hit the pedal and went flying forward. No, because the inertia of the car changed, but the book didn't. Okay, the only way that that happens is if the book is like in a seatbelt or something. <clears throat> then it's going to go the same velocity and direction as the car. But anyway, so if it flies toward you, the forward velocity of the car must have increased. <clears throat> if it's in your lap and it suddenly flies forward, then the velocity of the car must have decreased. That means somebody must have slammed on the brakes and the book was moving the same velocity as the car. And when you, <clears throat> when you hit the brakes, the book doesn't stop moving. It just goes forward. So... It's the same situation, but opposite sign there. All right, <clears throat> a few more, then we're done. Number four, the acceleration due to gravity is higher 
on Jupiter than on Earth. The mass and weight of a rock on Jupiter compared to that of Earth would be, well, let's see. So the weight is Fg, and that equals m times g, right? So they have to have the exact same mass. So it's saying the mass, that's the first answer, and the weight is the second answer. So I know it can't be C or D because the mass has to be the same. Now, <clears throat> the weight, the weight is your FG. So if your G goes up, because that's what it does, it's higher on Jupiter than on Earth. If your G goes up, then your force due to gravity, which is your weight, is um, directly proportional to gravity. That means that your weight will have to go up. So you'll have the same mass, but your weight will be more. So it's A. Okay. Hammer and a pebble are dropped simultaneously from the same height. Neglect air resistance. Well, what's going to happen? So does the hammer accelerate faster? Does it accelerate slower than the pebble? Um, does the pebble accelerate faster because it has a smaller mass? Do they both accelerate at the same rate because they have the same mass to weight ratio? Or does the pebble accelerate slower because it has a smaller mass? So <clears throat> let's see. So Fg equals mg again. They will have different masses, but if we look at their um, weight compared to their gravity, that will give them their mass. So they will both accelerate at the same rate because they have the same, oop, I meant weight, weight to mass, weight to mass, Fg equals mg over m. There we go. Weight to mass ratio is a constant, which is gravity. And everything that falls on Earth has the same acceleration due to gravity. So they both accelerate at the same rate because they have the same weight to mass ratio. <coughs> All right, last one, and then, yeah, I'm stopping there for today. A loaded truck collides with a car, causing huge damage to the car. Which of the following is true about the collision? The force on the truck is greater than the force on the car. Nope, can't be, because that would violate Newton's third law. Force on the car is greater than the force on the truck. Can't be, because it would violate Newton's third law. <coughs> the force on the truck is the same in magnitude as the force on the car. Ding, 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 that is definitely true. Then they talk about displacement. During the collision, the truck makes later displacement than the car, and during the collision, the truck has greater acceleration than the car. If they have the same force, um, then they can have different masses and different accelerations. They can have different displacements, but the displacement is going to be determined by how fast they were moving to begin with. It says nothing about how fast. It just says a loaded truck collides. It doesn't even say that the truck is moving. The car could have hit the truck. So you can't say anything about displacement, really. But during the collision, the truck has greater acceleration than the car. That's probably not true, because if we're looking, if they have the same force, so the force on the truck is equal to the force on the car, then the mass of the truck times the acceleration of the truck is equal to the mass of the car times the acceleration of the car. If the mass of the truck is much, much greater than the mass of the car, then the acceleration, oops, that should say truck, then the acceleration of the truck is a lot smaller than the acceleration of the car. So E can't necessarily be true. If it said during the collision the truck has a smaller acceleration than the car, that could be true. But again, we don't know how fast either of them was going at the beginning. So you can't really make a comment on the greater acceleration or the greater displacement. So just be careful. If you don't have enough information, don't try to pick out extra answers. Okay? All right. Have a good one.